Hi golfers and welcome. I'm coach Carolyn, Leopard certified instructor and former professional tour player. And today we're going to talk about chipping. So today I want to introduce you to a very simple system and how you can practice your chipping that you can really take onto the course and feel so much more confident about your short game, about the club you're choosing, about the shot you're choosing. So let's jump into it. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome. It's great to have you. Make sure you subscribe, like and comment below because I always love to hear from my followers. All right, so I have four clubs here and as you can see this is kind of a bump and run it's a longer chip i'm on the fringe you could putt this from here but i want to give you more options so that's why we need more shots in our bag we're using more clubs around the green and that's going to give you more options more creativity and make you a better player overall down the line so let's do it on this shot i would never use a 60 degrees because 60 degree is going to be too high lofted it's going to tend to dig and get stuck especially when you're into the grain which in this case i am and that's the case a lot actually around the greens especially if you're dealing with Bermuda grass. So make sure that your 60 degrees stays in the bag when you're looking at a chip like this, where you have a lot of green. And this chip is 20 paces exactly. So here you would never use a 60 degrees. And I know a lot of people just tend to pull it out of their bag because it's comfortable, because they feel like that's a wedge and we should be using a wedge around the greens and not a regular club, but that could not be further from the truth. So make it easier on yourself. Leave your 60 degree in the bag and take out some actual clubs. And we're gonna be starting with a nine iron here. I've got an A wedge and I got my 56. So for all the people out there that love wedges, and I do love wedges too, we have an option with the 56 that we can do. But again, the 60 degree is not one of them. So that's gonna go bye bye. Sorry, Callaway, that. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. No golf clubs were hurt in the making of this video. So we're left with our 56, with our nine iron, and with our A wedge. And when you look from down the line, you can see that I've set up three different tees here in line with this pin for my chip. And these tees are in reference to my landing spots because it's really important to pick your landing spot first and not pick your club first. Because if you pick your club first, you're already locked into a certain shot. But if you pick your correct landing spot, and we're gonna to get to why that is the correct landing spot here in a second, you can actually adjust and pick the club that matches that. So you don't lock yourself in too early and make the wrong choice. So here, the landing spot that I'm choosing is the closer that you can choose a landing spot to yourself, the easier it's going to be for you to control that, right? Because you only have to hit the ball from over here to here. So it flies from over here and it lands here and the rest it rolls, right? So if you've done your job in flying it from here to here, you can't really do much about it anymore. It's just going to be rolling and that's going to be the green, right? So assuming that you have read the green correctly, once it lands, it's out of your hands and it's very low risk. Then if you go to the second level here, you have to fly the ball further. Now we're almost flying the ball two thirds of the way. So now you actually have to make sure you fly it all the way here, which is a little bit harder to do, and then it'll roll. And then the last version right here, this is halfway. So we're flying at 50% and we are rolling at 50%. That is gonna be, again, a little bit more challenging than these two because we're getting further away from our actual shot spot. And the further away you go, the further you have to carry the ball, the more spin comes into play, the more contact comes into play, and it's just gonna make it a lot more challenging. So I'm a fan of picking the closest landing spot to you and choosing the club based on that because it's just gonna lower the risk. And in golf, we all know it's so important to lower risk. All the pros, what they do and how they choose their clubs and their shots is to have the lowest risk involved, even though they are as good as they are. It's all about managing your risk on the golf course and minimizing it giving yourself the chance to score the lowest. So now let's start with our nine iron right here. And this is a great drill for you to practice when you're doing your wedges. And I really want you to focus on these tees, on these landing spots, not on the pin. You'll see that this is, it will end up at the pin if we actually are able to focus on the tees, on these landing spots. If you're able to land it where you wanna land it, it's going to be at the pin. So the focus really of this exercise is on your landing spot only and not at the hole. So let's make sure that we focus on that solely in this video. So I like to stand really close right here, especially on these longer irons. I mean, it's not a long iron, it's a nine iron, but a longer iron to chip with than a wedge. So I'm gonna put my ball pretty much a little bit back from middle and I'm going to stand my club up a little bit. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm lifting my hands a little bit. So my club is now sitting more on the toe, if you will. And what that does is it keeps it from catching the hosel and catching 
and chunking. So whenever you chunk a chip, it's likely because you caught kind of the button of the club and the kind of backside of the hosel right here on the leading edge. So if we're simply setting up and we're lifting that, that heel of the club a little bit by lifting our hands, getting a little bit more closer, a little bit open feet, a little bit open body, having your weight on your front foot about 70% on the front, 30% on the back. And then all you have to do is feel like you're hitting it a little bit on your toe. You're standing the club up a little bit on your toe and you're just driving this little chip. It's a very, very short motion. And again, the closer your landing spot is to you, the less motion you actually have to do. So again, less risk, less movement, higher chances of success. So let's hit this nine iron and I'm going to land this at the first tee. And then let's see what it does and where it rolls. Because ideally, if I'm able to deliver this, my, my ball will be very close to the pin. So it's just a foot past, half a foot past, but you can see it's just a little bit past the pin. We can absolutely live with that. That is not a bad chip whatsoever. So the better you get at hitting those landing spots, I'm gonna hit another one where I can hit it right at that T, land it a little bit shorter this time. Similar shot, just a little past that T, but look at that, it's pin high, just a bit past pin high. So now we're going to switch to our A wedge and this club has a little bit of a higher loft so it's going to fly a little bit further and it's going to roll a little bit less. It's going to fly about two thirds and then roll out the rest. So let's do this and let's focus on the second tee here, second landing spot that we chose and try to land it as close as possible to it, making sure we do the same things. We're standing the club up a little bit on our toes so we don't catch the ground too much. And we keep our weight on our left side, hands a little forward and just rotate from your core. Caught it a little bit quick. So it was just past that second tee. But again, you're just past the pin a little bit. You're putting back up into the green, into the hole. So that's actually good because, you know, uphill putts are a lot easier. So when you choose your shot, also make sure that you kind of look at where around the hole you want to leave yourself. If you do want to leave yourself a little bit longer or past the pin because you have a you know, putt coming back up the hill as a birdie or a par putt versus leaving yourself short and then having a downhill putt, which is much harder to make for anyone. Um, take that into consideration. So again, all these three, if you can see them, they're very much grouped around the pin and they're all really good chips. So let's try one more here with our A wedge, landing it on the second tee. That was pretty good. Just a little bit left, but it's going to come back in. So. You see what I'm doing here. This is the ladder drill, if you want to call it that way. Um, you could put alignment sticks, you know, kind of parallel to yourself and then try to land it, you know, just before, just past them. You can do it with tees like I am doing it. And this is just super, super helpful to learn how far your balls are rolling. And again, I'm only focusing on these landing spots and I'm choosing my clubs based on those. So again, to reiterate, the closer the landing spot is to you, the less risk you have. So if you want to take a nine iron, an eight iron, a seven iron even, then you can even work that landing spot back just into the green and let the rest roll. It's kind of like a putt, but with a little bit of help getting over that initial, you know, grain and rough and fringe. All right, so I just grabbed a couple more balls so we can hit our 56. Going to grab our 56 and that club is going to fly 50%, roll 50%. So highest risk shot, if you will, because there is the most carry in this shot. But again, if you're comfortable with it, you can totally do it, apply the same concept, get close, open your body a little bit, keep your weight in the front and lift that heel of the club a little bit so you feel like you're hitting it a little bit off the toe and the, and the club is standing on the toe a little bit. We're going to focus on our furthest away landing spot, that third tee, and land it right around there. So that flew the most, it's going to release nicely to the hole. Let's do this one more time just to get a little bit of practice. And I recommend the last thought that goes through your mind before you hit that shot is land the landing spot. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm thinking. Wait on the front, hands a bit forward, feel like my club standing on its toe. Landing spot. That was perfectly landed right on that level and it just hit the other ball. but. This would have released really nicely up to the hole. It would have been just a tapping. So, and you guys can see, if you look at all these chips, they're all in a really nice 
spread. They're all very close to the hole. They're all makeable putts. And you see, we use three different clubs here, but we have options now. And this is what I wanted to do for you guys. I wanted to give you guys options. And when you're on the chipping green next time, make sure you practice this. This is going to be a great use of your time. We all don't have that much time. We all have jobs, we all have lives, and as much as we'd like to be out here all day, every day, practicing and playing golf, we need to make sure that we efficiently use the time we have so we can do more of the other fun stuff that we like to do. So make sure that next time you go on the chipping green, you set up that little drill with tees or with your alignment sticks, and then you practice those and you rotate through more clubs, even take an eight iron, a seven iron, and see how far they roll out. And just do a trial and error, set a couple up, and land them there and then see where they release to and then adjust from there. So that's how you develop feel. That's how you develop good chipping. And that's how you put more options and more shots into your bag. Let me know in the comments below which club and which landing spot you like best. And if this is something that you have been able to integrate into your game, I think this is awesome. I've practiced like this all the time when I was still competing. And to this day, it is an incredible practice drill and a really good use of your time. So thank you so much for joining me today for this little chipping session. I always love to have you guys and I cannot wait to have you next time. Make sure to check out your seven day free trial at coachcarolingolf.com because I love to work with you guys and this is really gonna give you a little taste for seven days. You can access all my video libraries, all my videos, all my tips for free. So make sure you sign up and check it out. I cannot wait to work with you guys and have you guys send me your swings.